And we're just, look, just looking at each gazing other. Gazing into yep. my eyes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I'm Lisa, and I'm on Sydney's glorious northern beaches. And I'm taking you to three of my favourite places to find that perfect beachside treat fish and chips. Together, we'll be walking up an appetite. In this series, over 10 episodes, I'm going to be walking over 100 kilometres in search of deliciousness around Sydney and beyond. Today, I'm starting at Narrabeen Beach and I'm gonna be walking north, about 14 k's, yeah, it's a big one today, all the way to the gorgeous beachside town of Avalon. We're gonna stop along the way at three places where I am going to introduce to you three golden, crunchy, irresistible renditions of fish and chips. My mouth is watering just saying that sentence. We're gonna be meeting up with someone who can teach us all a few things about fish. When we're done with all the walking, I'm gonna take you back to my kitchen and I'm going to make you something inspired by the day. I can't wait. The sun is shining, breeze is blowing. I'm hungry, it's time to get going. Fish and chips is that quintessentially Australian beachy picnicky meal. And this is what I look for in good fish and chips. The fish, the batter has to be golden and crisp. And the fish has to be succulent and fresh and sweet and sustainably caught, if possible. And the chips, golden, golden, golden. They've got to be hot. They've got to be fluffy inside. They've got to have a crunch on the outside. And they've got to be salted as soon as they come out of the fryer. I'm a Melbourne girl and I've got such strong memories of jumping on the number eight tram on a Friday afternoon after school, heading straight to the fish and chip shop. Back in those days, they used to wrap fish and chips in butcher's paper so they'd make a beautiful parcel. When you wanna eat it, you have to tear open the top, put your hand into the hot, salty, fried deliciousness. We're heading slightly inland now to our first stop. Okay, I have done 1,491 steps and we're at Lakeside Fish Market at North Narrabeen. Now this is a perfect neighbourhood fish and chip shop and I can already smell the hot chips cooking. Let's go. Phil, this is the sort of fish shop that I want around the corner from my place. Tell me how it all started for you. I had a fruit market at uh, Balgala in the Totem Shopping Centre and uh, at the time it was 1986 and my cousin wasn't doing anything and they were renovating the shopping centre and I said why don't we open up a fish shop and that was 35 years ago. Wow. Now I have tried your fried fish before and it's really, really good. Can you tell me the secret to your batter? Self-raising flour, soda water, and ice to make it cold and, and the ice makes the batter nice and fluffy. I can't wait to have a piece. The thing about fish and chips is you've got to eat them when they're really hot but not too hot that they burn your tongue. Let's open. So good, the smell is amazing. I'm going to cut a piece of this golden fried fish. The batter crunches as I cut it which is just what you want. It smells delicious. batter is light and crispy, which is just what you want. You bite into it, into the really succulent fish underneath. I'm gonna have another one. Mm, so good. Now it's time to try a chip. Yay. Can you hear the crunch? It's salty and crunchy and it's fluffy inside. This is a good chip. I'm very happy. Not only do they have fabulous fish and chips here, but they've got the most beautiful fresh seafood display. So I've grabbed myself some gorgeous looking tiger prawns. Taste of Sydney summer. Mm. So come to Lakeside Fish Market for the fish and chips and stay for the tiger prawns.
Today I'm walking on Garrigal land and I'm excited to tell you about this Aboriginal art and storytelling project that is creating artworks for the 36 kilometre coastline between Manly and Avalon. It's incredible. This is one of the first pieces, Oyster Shells Middens by Francis Bell Parker. And it's so fitting that we've got oyster shells in our episode on seafood and it's actually so beautiful. And what it does is it tells the story of people and country, which is just so important. So I'm saying farewell to Narrabeen and heading up this bloody huge staircase. Ready? A lot of stairs. So I've made my way through the bush and I'm on the headland overlooking the breathtakingly beautiful Turrimetta Beach. Back to fish and chips for a sec. We all think it's an English thing, right? Well, did you know that fried fish is actually a Jewish thing dating back to the 15th century? You'd think I would have known that. Anyway, time to move on to the next stop. So we have made it to Mona Vale Beach. It's taken me 9,243 steps to get here and it's been a great walk so far. But the weather's changing, as you can see it's got really blowy. So it's a good time to head inland to our next fish and chip shop. Yay, let's get moving. So we've made it to Pitwater Place. Yes, it's a shopping centre, but at least we're out of the wind for a few moments. And I'm super keen to show you this very cute and classy takeaway, Beluga. I just love the name. Let's go order something. Now, I may know that your potato scallops are truly excellent. Can you tell me the secret to your potato scallops? First, you need a thick slice of potato, really fresh, but it's all about the batter. You need a really good batter with beer and sparkling water. It's a bit of a secret recipe. I'm gonna share it's just me. <laughs> There is nothing like chips straight out of the fryer. Nothing in the world. So delicious. I just have to finish it. Bear with me. Just have a look at this fish. This is Blue Eye Travella. So different from the last fish we had, which was hake, which was also good. This is smaller pieces of fish, which I really love because you get more batter. Let's have a taste. That is one excellent piece of fried fish. The fish itself is so delicious. It is really moist, really tender, and you crunch through the batter into this soft fish. It's just absolute heaven. The only thing is, I don't really want to eat it with a knife and fork, and it's hard because I've been served it on a plate. What I really want to do is pick it up like this, dip it in the tartar sauce, squeeze of lemon, this is how you eat fish and chips. Mm. I love this. The other thing I really wanted to try here was the potato scallop, but being from Melbourne, I know this as a potato cake, but I know being in New South Wales, I've got to call it the right name. How good does this look? This disc of potato battered and fried. Jealous? That is so hot, but so divine. This is one of the best I've had. You heard the crunch. It is so crunchy, it is so golden, and the potato is soft and almost waxy and steamed. It's just such a good combo. I gotta go back for more. Mm. So come to Beluga for the fried fish and chips, but stay for the potato scallop. One more bite. I'm approaching Bilgola Beach and I'm happy to report have done 
17,442 steps so far to get here. Now, just around the corner, I'm gonna meet the man who figuratively and literally wrote the seafood book in Australia. He was at the helm of two of my favorite restaurants with Greg Doyle, Eastside Bar and Grill and The Pier, and then created the amazing fish face in Darlinghurst and then Double Bay that we all remember so fondly. And that is Stephen Hodges, chef extraordinaire. I think you're the perfect person to be with me today because every single time, and I'm not exaggerating, <laughs> I googled how do you make fried fish, your name came up. <laughs> so tell that me. That just means that I'm older then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I yeah. think it means you're really good. Yeah. Can you tell me what's the secret to a good piece of fried well, I, fish? I think the simplest thing with, with fried fish is you need hot oil and cold batter. So everybody has a different version on what flour they're going to use. For someone to do at home, self-raising flour, corn flour, ice water and a little bit of bicarb soda. Great. Don't ask me for the, that. Don't ask me for the measurement. It's like, <laughs> I'd have to look you it up. You know what, it's all in your book, yeah. so that's fine, Yeah, it is, right? it's all in the book, it's all in the book. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was really happy when our paths crossed again, and they did, <laughs> yeah, yeah. when you started this amazing new business that I've fallen in love with this product. Yeah, yeah. It is an incredible, incredible cured Victorian river trout. It is unbelievable. I'd love to know, how did it start and, and okay, where did it come I, from? I got to do a recipe for Woolworths and through that I got to travel Australia with smokehouses yeah. and I met this amazing guy in, in Melbourne called Jody, who his parents are smokers in Wales. Now we've sort of forged a partnership and the product is just insane. It was better than I was doing in a little smoker. I'd really like to actually sit here and talk to you all <laughs> afternoon, I must say. Mm. It's been so interesting. I'm a bit of a gas bag with this. I love it, I yeah. love it. Well, we have made it to Avalon Beach, and I, I can't believe it. We have done 21,352 steps. It's about 14.1 kilometers, and it has been a day. I think we've earned some fish and chips. And Fantastic. It's my shout. Let's Beautiful, go. let's do it. I gotta say, I'm pretty happy that we are at our last stop, because I'm exhausted. We are in Avalon at Oceana Traders, which I think is probably the most popular fish and chip shop on the northern beaches. But I'm now ready for some more hot chips. What do you think? Let's do it. Something these guys do that not many fish and chip shops do is make their own chips from scratch. Please, tell me about your potato chips. So basically we get our potatoes in hull and we got a peeler at the back that takes the starch off the potato. And uh, after that, it goes into a chipper that chips the chips into size, and then we blanch them. So basically, it's all just normal potato. Uh, it's no frozen additives. It's all natural, and that's why it tastes so good. Love it. I'm going to start with the chips. I have, we had my eye on this one. Okay, we'll have a chip first. Mmm. Mm. That's good, isn't it? Delicious. I'm going to go fish. Let's get straight into the fish. Mmm. Delicious fish flathead, so beautiful. It's a great fish. It is so delicious. Mm. This is a really good piece of fried yeah. fish. Thick and so juicy. The batter is pretty perfect. And they're just hot, out of the oil. This is the way you've got to eat your fish chips and chips. Chips are delicious too. Delicious. What I love about these chips is that they're hand cut here in the shop. And I think that makes it a very authentic potato chip that tastes better than many others. Good flavour too. It's got a good, really good flavour. Mm. Come to Oceana Traders for the fried flathead. Stay for the hand cut chips and maybe stay just a little longer for the fish tacos. The fish is just so perfectly cooked mm. and then everything else is so fresh. It's really good. Stephen, thanks for joining me today. Absolute pleasure. Really, Thank you very really much. Fun. Huh? Where are we going for dinner? <laughs> fish, of course. So I've been to three inspirational fish and chip shops. I've talked to one inspirational fish chef and I'm going to take you back to my kitchen and make you something that I've been inspired to make from my day. We had such a great walk on Sydney's northern beaches and it was a really good reminder for me of how much I enjoy eating fish and chips. But between you and me, just us, 
I am never going to cook fish and chips in my kitchen. I am only going to eat it out cooked by the pros. But I did promise you something inspired and delicious. I've been craving, and I hope you're with me, golden crunchy edges, succulent flakes of fish, soft potato, and crispy salty chips. Yeah? Yeah. So I'm going to make fried fish cakes with sweet potato crisps. I'm using white fish and salmon. I've got a beautiful New Zealand king salmon and I'm using snapper. I'm gonna chop them up quite roughly because I still wanna taste the flakes of fish and then mix all the other ingredients to form patties. To the fish, I'm gonna add some fresh herbs. I've got some mint, some coriander and some continental parsley. A potato, which I've already mashed. Freshly grated ginger, olive oil, lemon juice, zest of lemon, and of course, salt and pepper. I've mixed everything together and my mixture's a tiny bit wet, so I'm just gonna put a small handful of panko breadcrumbs in the mixture just to soak up that moisture. I'm gonna take a spoon of the mixture or an eighth of what's in the bowl and I'm gonna form a patty, just like that. And I'm going to coat it with the flour. It's a three-step process. Flour, beaten egg, now I know there's a way to keep a wet hand and a dry hand. I never do it. I always forget which hand was which, so we're going all in here. And then into the breadcrumbs, both sides. I like it really thickly coated so we get lots of crunch. And that is the patty. I'm gonna pop them in the fridge so that they just settle and set a little bit before we fry them. I'm gonna make some super crispy, slightly salty, sweet potato crisps. Not chips, crisps. I've got some sweet potato which I've sliced on a mandolin. Not paper thin, but super thin. Olive oil spray, or you can use olive oil and a brush. Make sure you spray it well. I'm gonna put my sweet potato slices on the tray, and if you find that they flick up, just turn them over so that they lie flat. The reason I put them in paper towel was to just get rid of any moisture, because moisture and oil don't mix. Next, we need to spray the top or brush the top with olive oil. I've got a little bit of flaky sea salt and I'm just going to salt the top. And now I'm going to put them into a low oven for about 25 minutes till they are crisp and just right. These have been in the fridge to firm up and now I'm ready to fry them. I've got about that much oil. If you want to use less oil, you can and finish them off in the oven, but I'm going to do them in the frying pan. So make sure your oil is hot. You need it to sizzle as it goes in. Because remember, it's raw fish and it has to cook through. So these look ready to flip. Those edges are really crunchy, just what I'm looking for. Sweet potato chips are ready and I'm just gonna let them cool on the tray. Crispy. Okay, these are looking great. I'm just gonna drain them on a rack. Just gonna let them cool for a couple of minutes before I tuck in as hard as it is to wait. These are glorious golden fried fish cakes with sweet potato crisps. Can't wait to have a bite of this one. I want you to hear the crunch. Perfect accompaniment is a little squeeze of lemon and a big dollop of homemade tartar sauce. If you want the recipe, just click on the link. Super quick to make. Here you goes. Mm. We're getting the crunch that you would get from fish and chips, but we've got flaky soft fish inside, smooth potato, and the whole thing is just brought to life with herbs and lemon. They're really, really delicious, and listen to this crunch as well. I'm gonna have three at once. This is one happy crunching person right here. If you loved today's episode as much as I loved all this crunchy goodness, please click on three things, like, subscribe, and that little YouTube bell. Thank you for walking up an appetite with me. It's been a great day. And remember, there's gotta be joy in the journey and deliciousness in the destination.